Good afternoon and welcome to another week in our garden. Now it's it's lovely and warm today but we're getting quite a few big black clouds coming over. There's been no rain yet but we're hoping so if we have to abandon and suddenly run to the shed I'm sure you'll understand but we could do with some rain. Now we're going to start this week picking some beans. These are French type beans and they're called and they're a dwarf bean and they're called Primera and they're quite a nice bean actually Very, they're, what we used to say was a bootlace bean what we'll do is we'll lift the whole plant take the beans and then take the whole plant to the compost bin it's just a case Pulling up, we would like to leave the roots. Can you see those nodules on them? They're the nitrogen nodules. But I will try my best not to bring them up, but it's almost impossible in there. And then we'll just pick them. Believe it or not, it's just started to rain. Now we've had lovely sunshine all morning. Now it's clouded up. So we'll bear with it for a minute. And if it gets any heavier, we'll leave it for a minute. There they are, look, they're lovely beans. There's loads of them. But this is the best way to pick this sort. There you are, look. Love, oh, I'll get another one now, drop that. There you are. Lovely beans, slice well and cook very quickly and that's what we want these days <laughs> we will now abandon the bean pick and go and sit in the shed for a moment <laughs> now we've returned to the picking of these beans it rained for about three minutes and what fell has now evaporated so but it was rain definitely was rain now we've finished picking it's still very very cloudy i don't know this weather's crazy they're the beans nice beans those are they're a bit very very tasty I, I love those beans now these french beans here we will put a name on them i've forgotten them and the tickets washed off uh, we're leaving all these for seed for next year likewise here these are the alderman peas that we left for seed they're ready for taking now and podding we'll get the peas out of those these are the plus ultras from Bill and Val bless you those at the bottom are the pongos not quite ready yet we'll just leave those and this end there's the Kemp blue now we're leaving all those till the this state and then we'll take those get the peas out label them up and then they'll go in a full row now apart from now this full row here which are the coco de pampo they're nowhere nowhere near ready yet they've got lots of beans on them but they're not they're not swelling yet there's there's one or two nearly ready because of this funny weather we've been having but we'll leave it until they all dry or die takes them a bit earlier and apart from a few courgettes and a few spring onions that we've got in here this will be empty as soon as i can i'll empty it take these nets off and then we'll convert all this netted area for strawberry production perhaps have three rows that go in full length and that'll be it we'll that's a winter job though we haven't got to worry we've got to think about it but we're not going to do it yet. so we'll move on to the beetroot all this in here i'll come down perhaps later if it's not raining and i'll pick all these up sort them out and get them composted now hopefully we're going to lift this beetroot that we've left this is cylindra 
Now all the uh, bolt hardy, the round ones, have all been seen to and bottled now. Now these will be cooked and frozen ready for when the jars are ready for refilling. There are some wonderful shapes in there but they are cylindra. <laughs> so we'll start this end. I might just have to lift them because the ground is so hard. Yeah, I will need the fork just to, to lift them up a bit. And then I should just twist the tops off and put them in the tub. There we are. Cylindra. Now, I'll clean as much of the soil off as I can. Obviously I can't wash them now because my tank is empty. And I don't think that last bit of rain's done any good at all in the tank. But as you can see, they're quite, quite decent beetroot. We'll do, we'll do two or three. Let's see, keep going on this row until we get this row out. There we are, that's a funny old shape, but then again, anybody can grow straight beetroot, can't they? Not many can do that. You can see how wonderful different shapes we've got. So I'm now going to lift them, twist the tops, put them in the trucks and show you what we've got. Now that's the Cylindra beetroot lifted. We'll take it up to the house and give it a good wash now. Now next time you see it, it'll be planted now with salad crops. Now we've come round to the tomatoes. These are the Crimson Crush, the red ones. Now I'm going to pick what is red because I've shared quite a few with the pigeons but I think they've had enough now so I'm going to pick the rest. There's quite a few ready. Eh? These aren't too bad at this height because pigeons won't get these but any lower down I'll show you in a moment. Lovely tomatoes, a bit marked because they're outdoor, but we'll live with that. I'll take this and show you on the next one what the pigeons will have. That's what the pigeons do, look, they've scored it out and it's gone soft and going rotten now. And they'll do that all over the lower tomatoes, so we need to get them picked. Now it's nice to have Crimson Crush with it being so blight resistant but what I find is they're quite difficult to pick. They don't bring, break off so well just above the stem there but you finish up with quite a few like that. These here, as soon as they can see them they'll take them and start pecking into them and before you know it the the ruin. So we'll take them then they can't get them. There's quite a few up there. So I'll get them I'll get them picked and come back to you and show you how many we've got. Now there's the tray of tomatoes we picked. A few green ones we knocked off but we'll pop those in the fruit bowl they'll soon ripen. Nice tomatoes, good colour and good size, excellent size, more even size. Very pleased with those. Now we've come down to sweet corn. They are ready for picking. We have had a look at one but we'll show you as well. I'll just take my gloves off. I don't think those. Usually once your tassels have gone brown, they're they're more or less ready but I always like to do have a look they just break one off and then we'll just peel it back I'll drop the I'll drop the bits down there and pick them up later if you snap the bottom off it's easier and then you just keep peeling 
This is where, obviously this is because we want to have a look. If it's harvest then we'll leave these on. And then you've got to find the joint, there it is. There somewhere. There. There it is. Keep going. And again. You can see it's coming through now, you can see it's ready. Take the top off, take the tassel off, and then sort it out from the stringy bits. Take the bottom, and there you go. Now they say if you put your nail in and you get white stuff coming out, uh, it's ready, and that actually shot out. So the, these are ready, and that's. That's a nice sweet corn. What we'll do, we'll pick some of the biggest ones, the small ones at the bottom will perhaps leave for a little while, although they're showing ready, they might need to be picked. And with if they're a bit small in this, we'll just cook them and feed them to the chickens because they absolutely love these. We'll get some picked. It's just a case of Grabbing them, pulling them down, that's it. That's how you harvest them. But you can feel these are well packed and ready. I'll get some picked and put in the truck. Now, that is our sweet corn harvest for this year. Quite a few, and they're quite a weight, I can show you. But as you can see, they're nicely ready. I'm on the potato patch now. I'm just gonna lift two roots for the weekend. We are slowly getting through these early potatoes. Ugh. There's quite a few small ones in them, but the rest are presentable. But I will take them all, I don't want to leave any in the ground. I'm quite pleased with the potatoes this year. They've had no water as such, mainly what's fallen on them. They haven't had a lot of that. But it was well prepared and I think it's that what's given us a crop. I'm just going to cover that one up. There was one th showing through the soil there, so I've covered it up. That's one of the lates anyway. There's a few with slug holes in, but I'm afraid we have to live with that here. It did have two, two dressings of NEM slug, but it doesn't seem to have worked so well. Even though we've had all this dried, the soil's not too bad. Yeah. 
that could break down nice for that. There you are then, a couple of roots, not producing an awful lot but for the weather they've had and what we've done to them which was nothing really, that'll do nicely. Now that'll be it for this week, hope you've enjoyed it, we had quite a harvest this week and it's all good stuff so I'm so pleased. The apple trees growing well and there's a lot of fruit on it. But as I said last week, I will come and summer prune it. As you can see, this is what I'll take off. I'll take off all this new growth. So I don't want apples up there. I want apples where I can pick them. I'm getting too old for climbing ladders. So that's what I will do. I get the long handle and take those off. And then when we've given it a good mulch in the winter, it won't even know and it'll produce some good fruit again. Now as I said that'll be it for this week. Hope you've enjoyed it. Take care everyone and we'll see you next week. Bye now.